In the second set of notes on section 10.4, we will be discussing two different types of problems. The first problem we'll talk about is called the walk-around problem, and the second problem we'll talk about is called the common tangent problem. For both of these problems, it is extremely important that you memorize the given steps in order to sufficiently and effectively work out the problem. Let's start off with the first example. For the first problem, we're given that segment AB has a length of 12, the segment BC has a length of 8, and then segment AC has a length of 10. We want to find the radius of circle A. Well, if we look at step 1 for the walk-around problems, it says let x stand for the segment length you're looking for. Well, right here, this yellow segment is a radius of circle A, so I'm going to call that x since it's what we want to find. Do we have another radius there? We have this yellow segment right here, and since all radii in a given circle are congruent, we can also call that yellow segment x. Now you can walk around the problem either counterclockwise or clockwise to fill in the remaining segments in terms of x. I'm going to go clockwise. So we'll come across this purple segment next, which is the radius of circle b. Since the whole segment ab has a length of 12, we can represent the purple segment with the expression 12 minus x, since we're taking the yellow segment away from the whole one and we're left with the purple. Since all radii in a given circle are congruent, we could call the other purple segment 12 minus x as well. To represent the green one, we have to take the length of the segment BC, which is 8, and subtract off the purple segment, which is 12 minus x. Don't forget to put parentheses around that, so we're doing 8 minus the quantity of 12 minus x. Distributing the negative, we're left with 8 minus 12 plus x, which is negative 4 plus x, or you can rewrite it as x minus 4. So the green segment has a length of x minus 4, which means that the other radius in that circle, this other green segment, also has a length of x minus 4. Step 3 says we want to write an equation using the starting segment and ending segment. Well, we started with the yellow segment and we ended with a green one. And we know that the yellow and green make up that segment AC, which has a length of 10. So we can do yellow plus green equals 10, part plus part equals whole. So x plus x minus 4 equals 10. That allows us to solve for x. We get that x has a value of 7. And since we wanted to find the radius of circle A, which is represented by x, our final answer is 7. Example 2 is fairly similar to example 1 in that we're going to do a walk around problem. But instead of dealing with radii in circles, we're dealing with the two tangent theorem. We have some tangents being drawn from the same external points. So let's start with W here, since we want to find segment PW, so I put an X there. Those two yellow segments must be congruent. Now I'm going to walk around the problem counterclockwise. So the purple segment we could call 24 minus X. And since those two purple segments are congruent, we could call the other one 24 minus X. To represent the green segment, we do the whole segment QS, which is 15, so we'll do 15 minus the quantity of 24 minus X, which is the purple one, and we'll get that the green segment has a length of X minus 9. We started with yellow, we ended with green, so we can do a part plus part equals whole. We know that X plus X minus 9 must equal 20, that entire segment length for WQ. We get that X is 14 and a half. For our final walk-around problem in example 3, we're given that MO has a length of 17, OP has a length of 15, and AP has a length of 10. Since we want to find MA, I'm going to start with this portion of the segment MW. So once again, we're dealing with the two tangent theorem, so we know that those two yellow segments are both X because they're congruent. I'm going to walk clockwise around the diagram. So we could do 17 minus x to represent the purple segment. And then to represent the green, we have to do 15 minus the quantity of 17 minus x. So let's go ahead and set that up and see what we get there. We end up getting x minus 2. So we could represent the green segment as x minus 2, which means that this other green segment is also x minus 2. Then, to represent the red segment, we have to take segment AP, which is, has a length of 10, and subtract off the green segment, which is x minus 2. So we could represent the red segment with negative x plus 12. 
We started with yellow, we ended with red. So now let's add up those two segments. So x plus a negative x plus 12. Well, our x's are going to eliminate, which is what we want, because we want to find the length of segment MA, which is just 12. Moving on to the common tangent problems on the next page, it is extremely important that you have these steps memorized. Let's start off with the first example. First thing we want to do in step one, it says to draw the radius to the point of tangency and draw in our right angles. That's what we talked about earlier. Second thing we want to do is connect to the centers of the circles. Now we're given some information. We know that the radius of circle P is 3. So I'm marking that there. And the radius of circle O is 10. So I'm putting that there. We know that OP is 25. So that whole segment has a length of 25. In step three, this is the part where it gets a little tricky, so you may want to watch up here first. It says, from the center of the smaller circle, draw a line that's parallel to the common tangent. Well, our common tangent here is AB. So from the center of the smaller circle, I drew that dashed line, which is parallel to our common tangent. Now we're looking for the rectangle and right triangle. Well, the rectangle is above and the right triangle is below. So, since this segment here, the red one, has a length of 3, since opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent, this segment here also has a length of 3. But since AO has a length of 10, we know how much is left over for this black little piece. There must be 7 left over. Now we can use the right triangle. We know a leg of the right triangle is 7, and the hypotenuse is 25. So it's a 7, 24, 25 family. And since we're working with the rectangle, we know that opposite sides of the rectangle are congruent. So we know that AB has a length of 24, which is our common external tangent. Moving on to example 2. Example 1 was an external tangent, a common external tangent. Example 2, we're working with a common internal tangent that we want to find the length of. We're still going to follow the exact same steps with written above though, listed above. So we are going to connect the centers of the circle to the points of tangency, draw in our radii, add in our right angles, connect the centers of the circles, which is what we did there. And we know that the radius of circle L is 9 and the radius of circle H is 6. Now from the center of the smaller circle, we are going to draw a line that is parallel to the common tangent. Well, the common tangent here is the internal one, which is TS. So from the center of the smaller circle, we're drawing a line that's parallel to TS, which is the dashed one right there. Then we are going to connect that to the larger radius to create one large right triangle. I'll highlight that just in a moment so we can see that a little bit more clearly. Now we have our rectangles, so we know opposite sides of the rectangle angle are congruent, so those opposite sides are each 6, which means that this whole segment here has a length of 15, since it's made up of the 9 and 6. Now I'm going to highlight the large right triangle that we should be looking out for in light blue here. We know the leg of the right triangle is a length of 15, and we know that the hypotenuse of the right triangle has a length of 17. So what type of triangle is it? 8, 15, 17. And since opposite sides of our rectangle are congruent, we can say that that opposite side, TS, is also 8, which is the length of our common internal tangent. 